basically on today's edition of Autistic Guy Pops Off the Mouth about money and politics and rants about the U.S. political system and how fucked it is, we're, I'm actually going to go over something I changed my mind on, actually. If you like the video, just hit the sub button. That way I, I know you like it and I like good stuff. Anyways, let's get into the video. So, for those who don't know, I was a actually kind of is somewhat of a supporter of the Palestinian side in the sense of, like, um, I didn't want them to be bombed and just, I didn't think Israel was taking precautions pro properly. Uh, all that good, all that stuff, actually. Not, not good, not good stuff, but all that stuff. Let's well, make that clear. Not good stuff if that was happening. But I watched a video recently. It was yesterday's stream with Apostate Prophet, like, uh, Ridvan, uh, is what his name is, but he goes by Apostate Prophet on YouTube, as well as David Wood, who goes by Apologetics Roadshow on ch channel on YouTube. I follow the both of them. I'm actually, I'm actually huge fans, and, you know, I did disagree originally with the Israel-Palestine stuff, but... It's on semantics, but I actually, I actually changed my mind on that. Um, I'm just going to go over the clip that had me change my mind on this. Uh, this should get to that real quick. There is uh, a recording between um, an IDF officer or IDF personnel making a call to a civilian in Gaza, telling them to leave, and, the, and the civilian doesn't want to leave. <laughs> Look, inform everyone that we will wait until everyone evacuates. Yeah, so there's a building, three families, about 20 people each, big families. Uh, so it's about 60 people. Somewhere in that range, could be 50, could be 70, somewhere in the ballpark of 60 people. And they're, they're, they're calling places and saying, guys, we have to bomb your area. This will be, hey, there's a, uh, we know where there's a, there's, there's a group of Hamas guys hiding and stuff like this. So we're going to bomb, we got to bomb this building. And they're contacting the civilians there saying, guys, get out. We're going to wait. We're going to wait for you. We're going to wait for you to leave, but we have to bomb this place. There's a bunch of freaking jihadis right there. And it's no, we're, we don't want to. And then, uh, of course, and then, of course, when Israel bombs the place, they kill the Hamas after they've warned the people. Then, oh, my goodness, look, it's a genocide against these people. UZ Win says, LOL, fake recording, not original Arabic. First off, uh, it is it is Arabic. They're speaking Arabic. The Israeli officer has um, speaks Arabic and has um, a strong Hebrew accent, um, strong Israeli accent. But they're clearly speaking Arabic, especially the civilian. Here. So you probably don't speak Arabic in making make this comment. Secondly, um, comments like these are very common in response to stuff like this. Mm -hmm. um, why in the world do you think Israel records this and publishes it? Do you think he's doing it so that he can, so that Israel can uh, convince dummies like you on the internet? That's not why they are doing this. They are collecting this and putting it all together for as evidence, as evidence to present, if asked, for example, if brought before a court, to present as evidence that the IDF issues many warnings to uh these to the civilians living there uh telling them to get out to leave telling them explicitly you will die you will be harmed if you stay they're not doing this for you they're doing this to defend themselves to protect themselves and to present evidence so they they will present this evidence and they will show them that they did warn civilians many many times this here is just one example which is publicized for you to see it but there's probably much, much more like this in the background, which the public will never see, which would be presented as evidence if asked. And this, by the way, clears Israel and the IDF of wrongdoings. Because if they are tried for war crimes and if it said uh, uh, Israel was deliberately targeting uh, civilians, they will case by case say, look, during this operation, we had to 
strike this target because Hamas has been consistently using this target for military operations. We had to strike it. Striking it would also put civilians in danger. We made our best effort to tell those civilians to get out. We made the best effort to somehow move those civilians. They did not listen, however. Despite our clear warnings, they did not listen. They stayed and they died. You know what that means for Israel? Nothing at all. It means Israel did their job, tried to minimize casualties, acted proportionally in their strike, and is not guilty. That's what that would mean. There you go. Now I, the feeble-brained individual I am, the fucking retard I am, thought that they actually were just publish publishing this stuff to say, see, we didn't, look, we, we, we called them. See, we called them, right? There's footage of it. You know, kind of like to say, hey, we called them, he, he, not really. I didn't know why they did that. I thought, like, there's no other way, right? No, they actually call them for evidence. I, I, I don't know why that didn't cross my mind, but I, I don't, I really don't know why I didn't, actually. Because you know what, I you know, I guess, I guess like, from, I guess from an American perspective, from, like, a Western perspective, right? We don't see this. Like, we don't see people who are willing to bomb their entire, get their entire family bombed and killed for an ideology. We, we just don't see that in the Western world. It just doesn't happen. Like, like, normally what happens, hey, you can try us, you can test us, but do not touch our kids. Like, it usually stops at, like, direct family, at least in the Western world. It, again, obviously, you're going to have isolated instances, but, like, the general you, the general Western world is like, yeah, t don't touch our kids. Like, m outside of Sodorian Psychopath, right? And again, this could be a one-off, but also, too, in the same way, 9-11, like, they're deliberately hiding evidence about 9-11. Why? national security risk if you release all the exploits that were used to commit 9-11 people are going to do it again like terrorist organizations are going to do it again right so i also understand at least from an israeli perspective hey we're not going to release all of this because uh if they want to try it again they're probably going to do that so that's not and so i also understand from a national security perspective from that you know from that point of view uh, and, and again, look, I don't, I don't think it takes away what's happening to the Palestinians is sad. What's that, the women and the children obviously don't have a say so in this, and that's sad. But, like, if you're the IDF, what else do you do? You drop, you drop leaflets, you call people in their homes to say, hey, look, a bunch of jihadis, a bunch of Hamas terrorists are going to be running around rampant. You might as well could have put a kibosh on it, right? Like, you have to, you, please evacuate. Please, we don't want, we do not want innocent casualties. Please leave. And then when they eventually, you know, say, at least for the ones that's, you know, for those people that do stay, it's like, nope, we're a martyr for Allah. Sorry. Bomb us, we're going to make you look bad. We're a martyr. Like, what do you do to that? Death doesn't scare them. Nothing physically scares them like like what do you do with them? i mean genuinely what do you do like and again look again i've said this on multiple times right and i think and also to mosab hassan uh, mosab hassan yusuf right a lot of the points he's making are completely correct you know like you know what uh yeah they got me to change my stance I'm, my mind is officially changed. It's changed. I'm absolutely pro-Israel. I, 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 again, as long as they continue to, to give warnings like this and try and minimize casualties, I'm pro-Israel. I've said this from the beginning. If Israel's doing what they need to do to eliminate, casual, to eliminate unnecessary casualties, that's fine. Uh, if it falls in a certain parameter of, like, national security risk. Hamas after 10-7, national security risk. Like, and again, sad, it's war. Sad things are going to happen, right? People are going to die. That doesn't mean it's not sad, right? But I, at least coming from, like, the Israeli perspective, it's like, what do you do? These people are not scared of living. 
They're not scared of anything happening to them while they're alive. They're, they're not scared of brutal torture. They're not scared of anything. Basically, their entire mentality is, okay, kill us. Basically, you can do whatever you want to us when we're living. We're going to Jannah, okay? Like, that's kind of their their whole mentality. And so, if there's nothing you can do to convince, to convince love physically, they're not scared of death. Like, nothing... I don't know what you do here. Like, at this point, what do you do? Because if you're Israel, what do you do? Like, how do you minimize it at that point if that's the reactions they're getting? But I, I figured I'd make an update on that because my mind is actually officially changed. Uh, thank you, AP and D-Wood and uh, Masab Hassan Yusuf for the work you do because you really changed my mind on this. Well, that's pretty much it. Anyways, peace.